So, in the last lecture we saw product measures. So, if you, if you have two sigma finite measure spaces you know how to define a measure on the on the product space. So, on the product space we have a product sigma algebra and the product measure. So, we the theorem we proved in the last uh, lecture was that uh, you can define a quantity for each set in the uh, in the product sigma algebra which is what we call the product measure. So, we, we actually did not prove the countable additivity. So, I will start with that today, uh, but our aim in the next two sessions will be to prove what is known as uh, Fubini's theorem which is uh, uh, one of the most important theorems after we saw all the basic uh, theorems like uh, dominated convergence theorem, monotone convergence theorem and Fatou slum. So, Fubini's theorem will allow us to interchange integrals which, um, which actually helps in a uh, lot of cases and uh, that is what will be done in the next two sessions. Okay, so, let us start. So, recall that we have two spaces now, we have x f mu, y g and nu. So, these are sigma finite measure spaces. Okay, that was used very very crucially if you remember sigma finite measure spaces. We decomposed both x and y into sets of finite measure and then uh, did analysis on that each piece which helped us in putting together everything to get a measure on the product space. Right? So, so we have x cross y, we have f cross g and on this space, so the theorem we proved was if you take um, any set q in f cross g, then we define two functions associated to it. One is, so we have q sub x which is a section of q, the x section, but this will belong to the uh, sigma algebra g and q super y which is another section but y section which will belong to uh, script f and since this belongs to g nu of q sub x makes sense and similarly mu of q sub q super y makes sense and we call this phi of x and this was psi of y and these were measurable phi was so phi is script f measurable so phi is a function on capital x remember that and psi is a function on capital Y and this is G measurable and so one can integrate them with respect to the corresponding measures. So, what we proved was if I if I have such a situation then integral over x phi x d mu x is same as integral over y psi y d nu y right this is what we did. So, these two are equal and this <coughs> this quantity is what we called uh, the product measure. So, cross nu of q right. So, this is the this is the quantity we associated with q and this is what we want to call um, uh, product measure. So, mu cross nu is the product measure. Of course, we, we need to say that it is actually a measure. So, that means it is it is countably additive. So, <coughs> let us get rid of that first and then we will go, go on to Fubini's theorem. Okay. So, consider this as a theorem if you like. The quantity we have defined mu cross nu is, is a measure is a measure which means it is a countably additive um, set function. Well, the proof of this is sort of one line because we have now done everything um, in detail. So, let us take q j in script f cross script g in the product sigma algebra q j disjoint q j disjoint. So, we need to show that. So, our aim is to show that the quantity we have assigned is countably additive right j equal to 1 to infinity equal to summation mu cross nu of q j j equal to 1 to infinity. Okay. So, let us let us call that 
q equal to union q j j equal to 1 to infinity of course this, this is a measurable set right it's a it's a union of measurable sets so this would be in the product sigma algebra now <coughs> let's look at mu cross nu of q well this is nothing but from our definition so we have a uh, recall there is a phi and there is a psi and so on. So, we will let us use phi for the time being. So, phi of x. So, you can integrate this with respect to x. So, phi of x d mu of x. So, that, that is the value of mu cross nu at q. So, what is phi? So, let us recall that phi of x is nothing but you look at q sub x. So, that is a set in script g and calculate its measure. So, we know it is it is well defined and it is a measurable function, it is a positive measurable function. Okay. So, this is nothing but integral over x phi of x is nu of q sub x d mu x. So, what is q sub x? q is this union disjoint union. So, q sub x is the union j equal to 1 to infinity of q j sub x. Okay. So, I can write that. So, this is equal to integral over x nu of q sub x is simply j equal to 1 to infinity q j sub x okay. d mu x. Okay. But these are disjoint, right? This is a disjoint union, and so q sub x will also be a disjoint union. So, this is also disjoint and nu is a measure. So, this will be sum right. So, this would be equal to summation j equal to 1 to infinity nu of q j sub x right. But now, this is a familiar situation you are adding positive functions in x and so integral and summation can be interchanged right that is just monotone convergence theorem so this is equal to by mct we have run this uh, several times so this would be summation j equal to 1 to infinity integral over x nu qj sub x d mu x okay so we are in good shape we started with uh, mu cross nu of q and we got some expression. Okay, so, what is that expression saying? If you look at the integrand, so if you look at one term there in the summation, so that is integral over x nu of q j sub x d mu x. So, what is this? Well, we can trace back and we will get that this is nothing but uh, mu cross nu of q j right that is the definition of mu cross nu of q j we know that instead of nu you can also take mu I mean the, the functions phi and psi we have defined for q we can define for q j's and we will get this. So, plug that in we will get that so, so all this implies that mu cross nu mu cross nu of q so this one I know is this one which is equal to. So, but each of them I have computed to be this. So, this is simply j equal to 1 to infinity mu cross nu of q j which is precisely the countable additivity right. So, countable countable additivity. Okay. So, that is what is called the product measure. So, it is a it is a genuine measure right. So, we if we have two spaces x f mu and y g script g nu we have the product space right. So, product product space is x cross y that is the usual Cartesian product f cross g this is the uh, sigma algebra generated by measurable rectangles and the measure mu cross nu which we have just defined. Okay. So, it is a count. So, it is a it becomes this is the product measure space product measure space. 
So, the one thing you should always remember is that if I take a measurable rectangle, so I take A in script F and B in script G, then A cross B of course, is a subset of X cross Y will be in F cross G, right. F cross G is this sigma algebra generated by such things which are called measurable rectangles. So, mu cross nu of A cross B right this is what we computed first if you if you look at the proofs this is simply mu of A times nu of B right it becomes the product of measure of A and measure of B this is what a product measure does. So, one way of another way of uh, doing this would be to start with this definition and then extend it to um, extend this to elementary set. So, elementary sets are finite disjoint union of measurable rectangles, finite disjoint union of of measurable rectangles. So, we know it should add up right. So, measurable rectangles and prove that it is countably additive there and then extend it to the sigma algebra generated by script E that is by monotone class theorem is f cross g. So, if you have a countably additive measure on script E, then you can uniquely extend it to script F cross script G that is called the Kara theodory extension theorem. Kara theodory extension theorem. So, that is an alternate approach ok. So, alternate approach. So, which we will not be doing this. Uh, but one could also uh, start from basic objects like measurable rectangles and then extend the measure to a bigger sigma algebra. So, that is one another way of doing it which we will not be doing ok. So, that uh, that finishes the construction of the measure, but now we will look at uh, various properties. So, as usual we have two of the spaces now sigma finite. So, remember the sigma finiteness always sigma finite measure spaces and we have the product measure space. So, that is given by f cross g sigma algebra generated by measurable rectangles and the product measure right product measure space ok. So, now one can state Fubini's theorem. So, this is the next most important theorem Fubini's theorem So, this gives us conditions under which we can interchange the integrals. So, remember we have x and y. So, when I integrate I can I can look at iterated integrals and so on. So, you you must have done some of this uh, in your BSc and so on. So, think of this as a uh, justification for such such computations. So, we start with sigma finite measure spaces x f mu and y g nu sigma finite measure spaces sigma finite measure spaces and we have the product of course, we have the products product space as well product measure space ok. So, let f be a function. So, let f be script f cross script g measurable. So, that is a function on. So, f is a function on f defined on defined on x cross y. So, it is a function of both x and y in two variables x and y. So, Fubini's theorem tells you the following a if f is non negative and and if phi of x. So, we have defined this for sets now we define this for functions is integral over y f sub x d nu ok. So, before I go further, let me recall that f sub x is the x function x section of f, it is a measurable function on y ok. And similarly, psi y, so this is 
integral over x f super y. So, remember f super y is the y section of f, it is a function on x right d mu. So, let us recall that f sub x is a function on y to wherever complex numbers or here it is positive. So, 0 infinity ok. How is it defined f sub x at y equal to f of x comma y. Right. So, you can integrate. So, this is this will be measurable and you can integrate with respect to the measure nu on y similarly for the other function right f super y at x is also f of x y ok, but f super y is a function on x ok. In this case it is a positive function ok. So, we have this. So, if f was indicator of a set characteristic function of a set this is what we did in the earlier theorem right. So, then phi is script f measurable ok, psi is script g measurable ok and the integrals are same right that is what we did for sets and that is what is true for functions as well and integral over x phi x d mu x this is same as integral over x cross y f d mu cross nu ok. So, that is the new addition here mu cross nu is a measure and f is a positive measurable function with respect to f cross g. So, this integral makes sense right equal to integral over y psi y d nu y ok. So, we will we will discuss the theorem uh, as soon as I write down the whole whole statement. If so here f was positive now we look at f complex valued if f is complex valued and and if phi star of x ok equal to integral over y mod f sub x. So, remember mod f is a measurable function sub x is the section. So, nu d nu mod f sub x is a function on y right and I so th now that is a positive function. So, you are simply integrating a positive function comma integral over x phi star x. So, this is a positive measurable function integrate. So, if this is finite, so that is one integral which we are looking at then then f belongs to L 1 of mu cross nu ok. That is one more state one more statement in the theorem. If f is in L 1 f is in L 1 of mu cross nu then the sections f sub x is in L 1 of nu right f sub x is a function on y. So, I can talk about whether it is in L 1 of nu or not for almost all x in x. So, the almost everywhere will be with respect to the measure mu on x right and similarly and f super y will be in L 1 of mu remember f super y is a function on capital X. So, it will be in L 1 of mu for almost everywhere y, but that would be with respect to the measure nu on y correct. For almost all y f super y as a function on x will be in L 1 of mu ok. And, and the iterated integrals are same ok. So, comma 
the function phi what is phi? So, phi of x is integral over y f sub x d nu and psi y is integral over x f super y d mu phi phi will be in l 1 of mu right phi is a measurable function on x I am saying it will be in l 1 and psi will be in l 1 of nu and okay, so I can write if then psi will be in l 1 of mu and iterated integrals are same iterated integrals are same. What are the iterated integrals? Okay, So, this is a longer statement. So, that is integral over x phi x d mu of x is equal to integral over x psi y d d nu d nu of y okay of course they but they are all same as x cross y f of x comma y d mu cross nu right x comma y so i'm just writing the variables x comma y so these are the iterated integrals why are they called the iterated integrals so let us let's look at that before we go into the proof of these theorems so let's look at the first integral so first integral is so this is this is just a discussion this is not the proof okay so discussion of the theorem phi of x d mu x what is that well what is phi we know how phi is defined so that is an integral over y okay f sub x right f sub x d nu right this is my phi and then i integrate with respect to mu right this is what we are saying well, let us write this in a slightly better form. So, integral over x, integral over y, okay. f sub x d nu. So, that is with respect to the variable y. So, instead of writing f sub x, so the f sub x at y is f of x comma y d nu y. So, I am integrating first with respect to the y variable and then with respect to the x variable, right. That is the phi x integral. What about the psi y integral? So, integral over x, integral over y, integral over y, psi y d nu y. Okay. So, we do the same thing. So, integral over y, integral over x. This would be simply f of f super y. So, that is f of x comma y d mu x. So, you integrate with respect to x first and then integrate with respect to y we are saying these two integrals are same right under some conditions. So, these two integrals are same. So, iterated integrals are same. So, you whether you integrate with respect to y first and then with respect to x does not matter they are same and they both are equal to the total integral of the function f right over the product space x cross y. This is what the content of Fubinet's theorem is. But what does it say? Let us let's let's go back to the statements. If f is positive, then you have this in this equality. Okay, so for any positive function, it doesn't matter which order you integrate. Okay, you the iterated integrals will be same. What is the second condition? If f is complex valued, and if you have one iterated integral to be finite right you are looking at you are not looking at the psi function you are looking at only phi function you can of course define psi star in a similar manner and you will have the same result so if one of the iterated integrals is finite then the function is in l1 and the c says if function is in l1 then the iterated integrals are same so how does one check that iterated in um, how does one use this uh, this theorem? Well, the e it is very easy to use the theorem because if I want to say if I want to say iterated integrals are same, I need to show that. So to say 
to say that iterated integrals are same integrals are same we need to say we need to say f is in l1 of mu cross nu right that is what we need to say but how will we do that we will look at mod f but if you look at mod f mod f is a positive function right and for positive functions the theorem says that iterated integrals are always same so for mod f all that you have to do is so enough to check enough to check that you look at mod f so modulus of f of x y so let me write it in that form mod f of x comma y now this is a positive function so iterated integrals are same so you look at either this with respect to x and then with respect to y okay or either this is finite or integral over x integral over y mod f of x comma y d nu y d mu x right this is finite because iterated integrals are same as the integral of mod f over mu, mu cross right so all this both of them are equal to integral over x cross y mod f of x x comma y d lambda uh, mu cross nu of x comma y right that's what the theorem says so it's, it's very easy to check all you have to do is to take mod f look at iterated integrals and see if one of them is finite if one of them is finite the other is finite they both are equal to the l1 norm of uh, f with respect to the measure uh, mu cross nu okay so this is a good time to stop um, so what we have just done is stating the fubini's theorem in 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 full so if you have a positive measurable function you can uh, simply compute the iterated integrals and see that it is actually in l1 in the product space and once it is in the l1 of uh, product space you can look at the iterated integrals okay so this is this becomes an extremely useful uh, useful theorem when you want to interchange integrals a special case is when x when both the measures are counting measures so this is a result which you would have seen uh, much earlier uh, if I have a double summation with positive terms, then I can interchange the order of the summation. That is, of course, uh, Fubini's theorem. Okay, so we'll stop here.